guest here today. Um, George and Melissa's goes back some time, even actually with our chef, Tom, uh, chef Tom Fraker, who is our, not only our executive chef and test kitchen director, his family sister were here today, actually grew up with George. They actually went to kindergarten and grade school together. So we have a little reunion going on here, but let me tell you a little bit about chef George at Garrity and everything that he has going on. We are celebrating his 12th cookbook. And I understand he has two more in the loop right now, number 13 and 14 coming out in the next year's there. You're just turning into a book machine, aren't you? I, yeah, I'm shocked that I have that many. Okay. Well, we're going to see a lot more stuff coming out of George, but let me give you a little background about him. Um, um, from working from his first uh, pastry job and rubbing elbows with the Hollywood elite, from making all the cheesecakes and foods for the um, multi-winning Emmy award-winning show, Golden Girls, and creating many of the uh, iconic uh, foods at Disneyland as well. George is an award-winning culinary educator and culinary tour guide. This guy travels everywhere, country to country, and even does uh, these food tours here throughout the United States. So you got to connect with him later about that. Maybe he'll be talking about it a little sure. bit about his presentation yeah. as well. Um, actually, yearly, he does the uh, south of France and some of the major cities in America. He was talking earlier about some of the pieces he has at home that are Julia Child's because he, um, he's been involved with food tours at, his, at her place out in France as well. Um, from food history and preservation is his passion. Uh, currently working on his 13th and 14th book, as I said, he um, is a, 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 a historic California icon food locations that he goes to. You'll see him uh, very much. He's much, uh, very much a guest at the, um, Hall the Hallmarks of Home and Family show. He does regularly spots like he just did the other day on CBS there in San Diego and their morning news program where he mixes up cocktails and a few tasty treats like cheesecakes and today celebrating the cheesecake bible his second edition they had to make a second edition because it was so popular from his first edition just over uh 16 17 years ago right 10 years was the first bible oh 10 years ago 18 years ago was the first book was the very yeah, first book so. well let's hear from uh, chef george and see what he's got going on ah uh, thanks yeah, cheesecake. I didn't know I was going to be so uh, known for cheesecakes. And, and the Golden Girls, when I did that show back in the 80s, I was doing a bunch of different shows. I was working um, at Renmar Stages, which was next to Paramount. And uh, they, I started working in the food prop department. And they said, why don't you um, work on these other shows? And I was doing some strange shows. And I didn't really know. We didn't have food stylists back then like we do today. And I just accidentally got into the cheesecake thing but i'll talk about the cheesecakes with golden girls later on but what i did is i put together a few recipes for you to uh, try out and i want to give you some tips throughout the, the very first book i ever did uh the 125 best cheesecake recipes this came out in 01 and people said how do you know they're the 125 best and i said well i gave 126 to my publisher and he took one away and said those are the best so that's how we did that then the Cheesecake Bible itself came out 10 years ago, and that was the original cover. Then the publisher decides to change the cover so people thought it was a new book, which it wasn't five years later. Then he sold it off, and we're, it's about six different languages, but this is the Italian version. And um, it, I have never made a cheesecake look like that in my life. And I said to him, um, why did they do that? And Because it's you can't find that cheesecake in the book. It's like a gelatin mess. And he said... Uh, they buy the rights, they do what they want, you just get your name on it, and that's about it. So I did, I was kind of worried about the, uh, um, the acknowledgements in a book. I wanted to make sure I didn't say something obscene in Italian. And so I ran it through my Italian friend, and she goes, it's exactly what you wrote. So I thanked the right people the right way. I was worried about it. Then we got the Cheesecake Bible just came out. I really wanted to call this the New Testament, because it was the second version. And they thought there'd be some places that wouldn't like that. So, uh, hey, it's food. Yeah. So, so that's our cheesecake uh, life in that part. Um, I finally put the Golden Girls cheesecake that I did on the set in the book. So uh, the last book, I remembered everything, I think. I did a book called The Biscuit Mix, and I didn't want to do it. And I, it doesn't even have a biscuit in it. 
It's like, I thought, afterwards, after the book came out in print, I go, wait a minute, it's like saying you're doing a chocolate book and you forgot to put the chocolate in it. So most important part of baking is the right tools. And um, everybody, I, I almost went past a, a store to get one. You've seen a cheesecake springform pan with the, I call it a washboard bottom and a lip to it. Most people will use those because they don't know what they're supposed to use. They use one of those and the cheesecake gets caught in there and you can't get the cheesecake off of it. So it's a big problem. What normally happens is they stop working after twice because the spring stops working. We wash the spring mechanism first. The bottom part, you don't wash until the cheesecake's completely devoured because you can't get it off of that. So what you do is you take and you just put plastic wrap and you serve it on that. So when I was working on the first cheesecake book, I asked the cheesecake can, uh, pan makers, I was like, why do you make it so rigid and textured on the bottom? They said, because people cut on it and we don't want the knife marks to look bad. I said, but it doesn't make sense to me. So then a lot of companies were coming out with a glass bottom. There's cheesecake pans that are $80 that you don't need. So what you need is a cheesecake pan that's a pop-up and there's a company in Gardena that makes them, but there's about five companies in the back of the book that tells you, but this is what you use. And the, it's flat, the, it's shaped, I call it L-shape. Um, it's, it's not concave, convex or anything like that. How you get this out, a cheesecake, this is a 10 inch one. Um, you take, I take a big soup pan and without forks, and just do this. The force of the cheesecake gets taken out all in one shot instead of ripping it. Everyone has their own way of making cheesecakes. And what I did with the, the book is I created a book that, the first one, where I would make about three to 400 cheesecakes per day at Disney when I worked there. And I thought, you know what, we've got to create a way that you make a cheesecake at the home use, at the home base. Because what happens is you read these recipes. I'm sure you've all read them put the cheesecake in the oven at 500 degrees, turn the oven off and let it sit there overnight. Could you imagine at Disney? We don't have that many, we didn't have that many. I still act like I work there. We say, it's been 25 years and I still think I, I don't have mouse ears anymore. So what you do is you think, how in the world can you have that many hundreds of cheesecakes cooling all night long? We have to use the ovens production wise. So back after a number of years, I was out at the Cheesecake Factory out in Agora helping them out with some stuff. And I came to the conclusion with, and they, they were like, this is great how we do it. I don't use a water bath. Everyone does that. Everyone, if I took all of you right here and you've never, you've made cheesecakes, you have a different recipe of how you do it. Um, there's the other one where you put it in the oven at 500 degrees and every 20 minutes, you lower it 25 degrees and reading these, nobody wants to make cheesecake at all. Now, if I made a cheesecake and Mimi made a cheesecake and we went to, um, you know, uh, a party, you made a cheesecake and I made a double chocolate layer cake. Everyone go, wow, I'm the cheesecake. Double layer cake, they could care less about because they see it all the time. Cheesecake is mystified in the books. It's so easy to do. So about an hour in the oven and that's about it. So just do the ingredients correctly. So get a can, uh, a pan that works well and they're listed in the back. So that's probably my number one thing of why people can make cheesecakes de decent. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, there's variables in cheesecake. Number one question, no. The number two question is when you do an Oreo crust, what do you do with the filling? I say eat it. When I, when I worked at Disney, we had one a, a cake decorator, Karen. She believed everything I said. And I said, uh, she says, what do we do with the filling? And I said, Every Thursday, that was her day off. I said, we have an extra half hour of lunch and we get to eat it. <laughs> and she's believing me. She's like, really? So then about a month goes by, it's a Thursday. She had to work that day and she says, what time do we get the extra half hour at lunch? Now I have forgotten about my story. And I said, uh, we don't get an extra hour. She goes, you said we get to eat the filling. And I said, oh, that's every other Thursday. <laughs> so, but you know, Anybody that breaks Oreos up, you throw them in the food processor, the white filling blends up in and you can't even tell what it is. So 
The other thing with the new Cheesecake Bible is people are having a hard time finding crust ingredients like lemon cookies. I don't know how hard it is, but some people, I can't find lemon cookies. So I created all of the crust recipes also of cookies so you can put them together. So here we go. I normally do the savory one first, but I'm going to do the sweet one first in case the place burns down and you all know how to do it. So the other thing is, is when I was putting together uh, 300 recipes, I experimented with blending cake batter and cheesecake batter, not blending it together, but blopping it into the pan so it bakes about the same time. And then you get these different textures, which you probably tasted with the pistachio cheesecake. So let's do our crust first. Our crust, um, we've got, I say, wet sand. If I go through double uh, or Oreos, let's say. We aren't supposed to say name of brands. I'm not uh, in the book. So I say Sam chocolate sandwich cookies, coffee flavored liqueur, Kahlua. You know, I have a whole list. And it really depends on what type of publisher you have, but this publisher did not want any name brands whatsoever. And um, so if I didn't say chocolate, if I say chocolate sandwich cookie, go through the list. You can go to New Newman's O's or natural. You can go to um, the uh, Trader O's or Joe's O's or whatever. You've got the store brand. You've got, so all of them grinding them have different moisture contents. All you want is wet sand is what I say. And I was teaching this in Ohio in Dayton. I still remember the cities that these things happen. And one lady, she raised her hand and she goes, I don't know what wet sand looks like. Think about it, Ohio, they don't see the ocean very much. And I said, oh, you've never gone to the ocean? She says, oh, no, she married richer. So she never got to go to see the ocean. And you want wet sand. Now, the other thing is, is take your typical graham cracker crust, butter, sugar, and you bake it. You've all seen that type of recipe? Why are we putting sugar in the graham crackers? They're already sweet. Why are we baking them? The protein's baked. So I'm taking away 15 minutes of your, your time right there of making the cheesecake. So what I do is I will take and put it only on the bottom crust. If you look at this, we have an Oreo crust. We don't go up the sides. I'm not, I'm worried about your health. You don't need so much crust. No, what it was was when I was with Disney, Club 33 is a private club and I would do these big cheesecakes there. And I noticed Everybody, not everybody, but people were leaving most of their corners because the corner's so thick and you get this thickness and they can't get a fork in there. So I'm thinking that's wasteful. We'll just do the bottom. It browns the sides anyway, and it's done. So there's another tip that I do. So I don't know if I'm gonna have enough crumbs because I did bring a 10 inch pan, but what I do is just, no, I'm gonna fake this. Go like this, pat it on the bottom, and then I throw it in the oven, uh, no, in the freezer. So I've skipped that. When you do it in the oven, you start the whole, hey, that's pretty good. I'm a professional. <laughs> so I'll just throw that in the freezer, dunk up the sides. And then the reason why the oven I came up with of when they would say bake it, when you pour the batter in, this would come back up at you if you didn't do something with it. So I'm throwing it in the freezer, which is a lot easier of the pan being cold versus being really hot going back into the oven. So that's why I do that. Then here we're, we've got our lemon pistachio cake on page 172. I wanted to be a professor so bad. Please turn your books to 172. I will wait. <laughs> this is one of the few recipes that is a two spray a spread. The original book, we were only allowed to have one recipe on each page. So that was part of my negotiations to do a, a, a secondary book. I wanted um, a number of recipes to be uh, two spread. So what we have here is our cookies and our crust is done. We're gonna act like it's in the freezer. Then we have cream cheese uh, softened. I wanted to write room temperature because softened, I get people in Iowa putting it in the microwave to soften it like softening butter and you don't wanna do that. But the publisher said, nope, we're using the word softened. So then we've got uh, granulated sugar. We've got large eggs. Lemon zest, freshly zested, fresh lemon juice, and vanilla extract. I get the question, what kind of vanilla do I use a lot? 
And uh, the kind I use is the kind that uh, I went to Madagascar and I got my own beans and I make my own. So I was in the jungles of Madagascar, rough life. I am. For eight years, I worked on Holland America ships and I went around the world and I was really fortunate because I went into the jungles of, after petting lemurs, this kid is standing there in Nosy Bee and he says, I said, uh, do you know where I can get some, uh, some uh, vanilla beans? He says, I've got some. I've got a little store. He had a clearing in the forest of all these bundles of probably about that big with two vanilla beans tied. And I'm thinking probably $25, $30. He says, $5. So I'll take the whole thing. My stateroom stunk really good for two days. And then you're sick of vanilla. You know, you think it's, you could smell it getting off of the elevator of the, then you finally, uh, it just, so by the time I did to get to South um, Africa, I uh, brought them back and they were dried. So then that's when I started making my own. So anyway, you want room temperature and I use a paddle attachment, not the whip. Uh, teaching classes, you get the whip, the hook and the paddle attachment. Paddle attachment is 90% of it. The hook you can throw away. Um, it doesn't want to work. Even the newer ones with the hook doesn't work right. And the whip is only for whipped cream egg whites and anything very liquidy, and that's it. The whip is the number one item that they have to uh, replace in mixers. And uh, then we've got our granulated sugar. Now, you get the question, how do you keep your cheesecake from cracking? That's one of my number one questions. And my number one answer is put more whipped cream on top. Nobody knows. But if you know this Cheesecake Factory has something on top of every one of their cheesecakes, they're hiding the San Andreas fault underneath. So what it is, it's I have a, a large mixer like this at home. And one day I was doing, um, I had three eight inch cheesecakes I had to make. So I have the three pans. Filled, I put one mix of uh, batter in. I put them in the pan, slid them in the oven. They baked perfectly, pulled them all out at the same time, put them on the counter. All of them are perfect. And then one San Andreas fault. So I'm thinking, what did I do wrong? I've done everything that I've told everybody to do of all of the things that could happen. What it was was the air conditioning duct was hitting just perfectly and cooling it a little faster than the other two. And that's what happened. So, yeah, if that happens, you don't want a big draft when you're cooling your cheesecakes. So what you have here, everything room temperature. Eggs go in one at a time. The protein goes into the fat of the cream cheese, the fat of the cream cheese. If the protein doesn't break up enough and it stays in big, it'll uh, explode and create cracks. That's another one. Um, over baking is probably number one. Uh, about an hour at 350. I don't go above 350. I think in the book, I only have three or four recipes that go a little bit above. So here we've got <laughs> egg one at a time until it blends up completely. And when I'm doing a big mixer, I will um, blend up the eggs and uh, we're talking 40 eggs are going into the mix. And I'll have 30 pounds of cream cheese. <laughs> Excuse me. I will take and... Um, drizzle it in slower but you watch it all blend up and then one more before i do the very last one i scrape the sides down i don't mix it at a high speed i don't put a lot of air into it um the other thing is is after so what you've done really is you have cream cheese or a cheese of some sort. The book has 14 kinds of cheeses. Primarily is cream cheese, but I've got all sorts of different kinds of cheeses in there. And then it gets leavened some way, sweetened some way, flavored some way. And that's about it. So cheesecakes aren't that difficult to figure out. Um, there we've got our last egg going in. Now, zest, I used to put it on right in the mixer but I decided to start doing it separate, like I'll fold it in because the zest sits on the bottom and just sits there and doesn't do too much. So I'll do that. 
And make sure you use the correct part of the microplane. That's one of my pet peeves on TV when I see that Martha lady. Take the microplane and do this with the fruit going back and forth, back and forth. And she's getting the pith and I'm like, oh, I'm going to pith you. So that's why my top. Then Valerie Bertinelli, you know, she, she started doing it. She did the first day and I was like, oh, and then she stopped doing it. Somebody must have told her that I was mad. <laughs> So we'll blend it up just a little bit more. And could I get a bowl, like um, a bowl that big? Perfect. So the rest of the stuff. Now I cannot, I, I have people that wash dishes, but not at home. I mean, when I'm testing recipes, I think there's someone there and they aren't. And uh, so what I do is I try to create recipes or I, I do the recipes in order where I won't have to wash the mixing bowl. In uh, When I was with Disney for the 10 years, we didn't wash the mixing bowl until the last shift. And all day long, we'd go without washing the mixing bowl. And I talk about this with students a lot. Um, if you, let's say I'm making cheesecakes today. I'm making four cheesecakes, lemon, chocolate, red velvet, and maybe, oh, lemon, chocolate, another one. You go with flavor profiles. You start with the lemon or cakes. At Disney, we would do a white cake, then the lemon cake, then the carrot cake, then the chocolate cake, then the brownies, then the cookies. You do the butter cookie first, then you do chocolate chip, double chocolate chip. And then you do a snickerdoodle at the end, you know, type of thing. So look at your flavors and start with the lowest and then go up to the, and then you don't wash the mixing bowl. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm not going to wash this bowl yet. I'm going to put my mixture in here. And then we're going to do our cake batter, which is pistachio cake. If you double this recipe that I've got here, double it and put it into a bunt pan. You have my pistachio cake from the uh, baking book that came out about eight years ago. The Complete Baking Cookbook. Again, you don't, I don't get to name the books. And I didn't want the Complete Baking Cookbook because I thought it sounded like add water and it becomes whatever, you know, complete Aunt Jemima cake, you know. Just, but the publisher was like, no, that's what we want to call it. So can I get a towel? Where is? Oh, there you go. <laughs> you asked, do you guys need anything? Tom will get you anything. <laughs> he was not like this in elementary school though. <laughs> so what it, um, the, uh, I forget what I was talking about. Something with the, well, yeah, we, we don't like to do that. So we wait till the very end. So here we've got the cake part which is all-purpose flour. We have instant pudding. I rarely use instant pudding, but this really works in this recipe. It makes it just enough green. You get a little pistachio flavor into it and it softens it up. Um, then you've got uh, baking powder and salt. You've got butter, granulated sugar, some eggs, whole milk. I get the question all the time, light milk, diet milk, what can you use? Go ahead, I'm not coming to your house. I don't care. Don't really care. How come when I teach for all these years, if I said I was using heavy cream, not one person would raise their hand and ask, could you use something less? But if you say you're using whole milk, they think, can I use 2%? Go ahead, I don't care. It's not gonna be very good. <laughs> no, changing recipes. My, I want everyone to make the pistachio blue cheese cheesecake. It's a very simple recipe. It's in the food processor. You do not, um, you use it, uh, somebody in Texas said, is it like a cheese ball? No. It's not a cheese ball, but it's layered and you use butter in it. Why well, I, I go to this party and the first thing this guy says to me goes, oh, I was hoping you weren't going to be here. Well, nice to see you too. And I said, how come? Because we were supposed to bring an appetizer. Well, he brought that cheesecake, but he said, I changed the recipe. I said, well, then it's not my recipe. No, 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 it's yours. I did change it. Well, I believe, let's just say it says, two sticks of butter, so a, a cup of butter, let's just say. He only used half and used butter flavored Crisco for the other half. I, I'm, you're all with me on that so far. 
So then I won't tell you where he works, but he's an anesthesiologist. And he is telling everybody, this is George's recipe. I'm like, no, it's not. It would not hold together, it crumbled apart instead of a creaminess because you food process the butter with the blue cheese to make it creamy and stuff. And I kept saying, no, it's not. And so I finally, after he said it about the fourth time, I said, listen, if I went to your work and only gave somebody half the gas they needed, and he said, well, that wouldn't be right. And I said, you just did the same thing with my job. Just let you know, I don't care how you guys use the recipes, but don't say it's mine when you've changed the ingredients completely. So I won't tell you he's with Kaiser. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, Kaiser, I, I use them. It's really kind of fun. I work with them a lot. And I tell that story to Kaiser and they think it's fun. It, it gets people to realize, no, it gets people to realize that chefs are just as important as anybody else. And if you're going to take our recipe, do, you know, do ex I say do it the way it says the first time around and then create your own or do something different. But I, I'm sure none of you would want that anesthesiologist to only use half the gas. So anyway, the cake batter, what we're going to do is we're going to take, whisk the flour, the pudding, the baking powder, and the salt, and we'll set it aside. And I'm going to use this one. And I tell you to whisk. I'm whisking, okay? Then we will take, um, set aside the mixer with the palate attachment. We're going to take the butter and the sugar until light and fluffy. I had a dog named Fluffy. My dad named the dogs. We had Fluffy, Storm, and Snow. I think my dad wanted to be a meteorologist because all the dogs were names of... So. Now, if you do this in a double batch, like I said, put it in a tube pan at about 375, 350, 375. And afterwards, as soon as it comes out of the oven, still in the pan, I will take a little bit of butter and sugar and uh, with uh, cream sherry and pour a glaze on it. And the cream sherry is really good. I created that recipe for a place I worked at in the 80s. So there's our butter. And it'll take about two minutes and we'll add the eggs one at a time. Alternately, I mean, we'll let the flour so we're going to put one at a time so there we have our milk up oh, there's our other stuff i moved it just like that now that little bit of pudding mix will turn it a little bit of a green so what i did when i created this recipe was to create the texture of cake in here with cheesecake. So when you have a full one, you'll get these um, pockets of cream cheese in it. It's almost like a cake with cream cheese filling. When you have to come up with 300 recipes, it's not easy. Now we're gonna take our uh, flour three and our liquid two. So flour, wet, flour, wet, flour. You understood that? Smart group. You should see some of the places I teach. They're very nice. They think we live in utopia. Just letting you know. California. Every 4th of July, I go someplace. And uh, I was uh, in Iowa. And in Mason City, Iowa. And go there and this, uh, this kid, he says, uh, he saw my ID because I was buying something. He goes, oh, what are you doing here? I said, well, you know, 4th of July, see the place. Wow. California. I said, do you have any good like restaurants around here? He goes, nah. I said, nothing at all. Something, you know, not a chain. He goes, well, a new place opened up an Italian place on university. I said, you know the name? No, but you go down the way and I'll have a sign that says all the breadsticks you can eat with all the salad. And I said, Olive Garden, you been there? He was so excited. He thought, he thought he had the only Olive Garden in the whole world. It was, you just, I, I think, America is really fun. Then I went to a restaurant that night, found one, and the waiter comes over and he says, we have something very new. We've never had it. It's exciting. 
I said, oh, what is it? Well, it's an appetizer and it's called hummus. <laughs> hummus. I thought, <laughs> okay, we got hummus. Have you ever had hummus? <laughs> yeah. I said, how do they make hummus? Because I'm, and I'm with some people and they're like, George, don't go there. <laughs> I just really want to know how you make hummus. Well, we get these bean things and we blend them with some oil and some lemon juice and garlic. I go, oh, sounds really good. Hummus. <laughs> I didn't order it. I was worried. <laughs> no, they said, it, it, they said, um, you know the fireworks are going to be at 9 o'clock instead of 10 o'clock. And so there, a storm's coming in. Everyone knows in town. Well, you know, you aren't part of the town. You don't know what's going on. And they all knew what was going on. So we had to hurry with our dinner, and we didn't get the humas. I wanted to go back. So there's our um, pistachio, just that light green, and our pistachio in there. Now, I don't want to overwork this. So what I'll do is I'll just do the rest by hand and scrape the sides. So there we have our batter. And so now we've got both. Now, you know, I t I'm going to read how I tell you to do it because every time I demo this, I just do it. Pour about half the cake batter in the frozen bread drops. Of the okay. So you can do it any way you want. I'm not in your kitchen. You've already gotten the whole thing of it. Sometimes what I'll do is I will just put some of this in. Now, keep in mind, this is a 10 inch pan and the recipe, I believe goes for a nine. I think, no, 10, no, this is a little larger. So, and I didn't freeze the crust, so don't look at the crust coming up. But I'm a professional, so I can do it. So you just kind of do that. And then you take dollops and put these in. And I'll take an offset spatula and it'll magically appear. <laughs> See, it's just great. Do you guys need anything? He'll get it. <laughs> then I will put the rest of it and I'll just go over it kind of. I'm not really worried about this. There is no wrong way to do this part. It's more of the ingredients and then I'll dollop some more to get rid of it. At first, I thought when I was testing this, you see how thick this is and you see a cream cheese batter? I thought, is it going to bake right? And it does. So um, the other companies will do a layer of cake and then they will take a cream cheese mixture and layer that, freeze them, and then sandwich them together with whipped cream or a cream cheese or something. And I wanted to put it all in one pan to where it's easier. And just like that. And bake this. You can put some pistachios on top of this if you want. And that is how we do the pistachio cake. Any questions? Oh, we'll get them after. All righty, now we're gonna do a savory cheesecake. I'm gonna rinse my hands real quick and we'll get another paddle attachment. Don't go anywhere. So when I was working on um, a savory cheesecake chapter, first of all, the first book, the publisher said, I will take you on. It was my first book ever. He said, only if we get a diet chapter. You have to say yes to get a book done. So you're like, fine, okay, I'll do a diet book. Um, I've, I've done some um, talks on the different um, proposals for cookbooks. And this one uh, that I did, I wanted, um, really I wanted it to be called 100 Cheesecakes Around the United States for every state would have two types of cheesecake and kind of like their motto, like we're the golden state, so I do something golden. Uh, Black Hills for South Dakota, Black Hills cheesecake of what might. And, 
And he liked the idea, but he says, no, we want 125 recipes. We want a diet chapter. And I thought, diet chapter? I don't know what that means. That's a four letter word. So we did the diet chapter. Then I got rid of it when I did the first Cheesecake Bible because that was my bargaining power. I don't want a diet chapter. And then uh, we went with, with Cheesecake Bible 2, we went with breakfast stuff because every uh, IHOP was doing cream cheese muffins and stuff like that. I thought, you know what, I'm going to add this to the part of it. And we have pancakes in there, waffles. And um, the savory, I expanded that a lot because... That is probably one of the most popular parts of the book is the savory, even though all of you ate the chocolate one first. But it was difficult. Sometimes I would be doing, creating recipes and I had a great chocolate pecan cheesecake. And then I had a great pecan chocolate cheesecake. We gotta get rid of one. They both are the same thing. You just move the names around. So you've already done the crust part. You want wet sand. And so what we've done with that wet sand is the butter is a variable in every recipe of what I was getting at. Back years ago, I went to Santa Barbara and there was a Santa Barbara cheesecake fact company. I think it's still there. Their crust they used was um, old biscuits. They made like biscuits and gravy type of biscuits, sliced them and dried them out and crumbled those. So with the savory cheesecake, I use for um, a lot of the stuff, whatever you're going to dip into it. So I use, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, stone ground crackers. So I'll grind those up. That'll be my crust. And then I'll use those around to uh, scoop them. Those of you in San Diego, I did San Diego Living on Tuesday. And I did a tomato cheesecake, something like that. I think I lied. I think uh, plastic uh, spatulas. Just a couple. So yeah, I um, have to, when you do morning TV, you kind of fly. One time I was doing a show, this is my 26th year on TV. And uh, I was going through the ingredients and I picked it up and it was whole milk that had turned to sour because of the lighting and we had to extend the show out. So I, I made a story up that it was buttermilk. <laughs> you think quick. So I said, oh, it's buttermilk. And uh, then when I wrote it on my blog, I said it was regular milk. That I tell the story. But you only have three to five minutes to do your whole segment. So you don't tell your mistakes until afterwards. Then you tell people. So, so here's our cream cheese. And this is our Chipotle chili cheesecake that probably is one of my favorite because people aren't expecting it. They see the recipe or they taste it and they think, what is that? And Chipotle's, Jack in the Box hadn't done Chipotle's at the time. So Jack knew how, didn't know how to say it. Isn't that a great commercial? Won't worry, you know, he says, are you with me on that? The commercial? So you've got the cream cheese. It just has a little bit of sugar. You've got um, tomatoes, garlic, onions. Sometimes if the onions are really, uh, I'll use shallots sometimes if I don't have an onion. So anything is that family. And the chipotle, I'll drain them and um, chop them up. Uh, you've got your cream cheese going soft again. This is only a six inch round cheesecake. It's not um, a big cheesecake. Besides serving it as an appetizer, I'll also serve it as a first course with maybe a salad. So just a slice or a wedge. Sometimes uh, individual ones and freeze them and then pop them out and put something on top. So I'm just gonna use them. I never break the shell right into the bowl because the one time I do it, the shell goes, not that you guys are eating this, but we have to look professional. If you look it, you are it, right? <laughs> so we're gonna, I'll scrape that down. And now it's a little, uh, the mixture is a little cold because I can see it looks, there might be a few little chunks here and there. So just take your cream cheese out um, a couple hours early and just let it sit there. Like I said, room temperature, you don't want to put it in the microwave. And don't use the, the low fat cream cheese, that, that stuff. Yeah. When that came out, 
I don't know if you remember the commercial. There is a slender woman standing there with a big chunk of cheesecake holding on to it, eating it, saying, I can have it with a third of the calories. Well, I don't know what they did because there's no way a cheesecake comes out that way with using a regular recipe. And even the recipe on the back. When I was at Disney, we had a um, restaurant they wanted to turn into a low fat restaurant. And remember Intamins? I mean, I know they all they make is donuts now, I think. Well, they came out with brownies and there were 90 calories for a brownie. But the brownie container was like this big and it served 12 people. So the supervisors come in and they said, we want you to do something like this. They're only 90 calories. They're really good. And they said, oh. So I gave the serving, took the serving and I took our carrot cake, the same weight serving. Ours was 84 calories. Theirs was 90. So I said, we can serve the carrot cake and call it low fat, the same amount of size, but you aren't getting the whole thing. So they uh, stopped that. So we came up with, uh, what did I come up with? Some of the qu things, no is not in the vocabulary of Disney. I came up with, oh, an angel food muffin that we drizzle glaze on it for no fat. That was about it. I, I say just eat fresh fruit. Why wreck something? You know, when you're used to a chocolate cake, you want a piece of chocolate cake. If you're going low fat, eat the fresh raspberries instead. I, I just, I don't, you can't change food. You can't add that much. Uh, the other thing is like a cake. If you're used to the flavor and the texture of a cake and they say, oh, you just use the uh, artificial sweeteners and they don't work right. It just doesn't work. I don't care what you and you still think it tastes horrible. So I'd rather eat something that's really good, like the fresh fruit. All right, so all these little things I'm going to blend in here, and it doesn't have a really strong color to it. It's got kind of an off um, uh, light color to it. And like I said, stone ground crackers and onions. Like I do with salsa, if the onions are really, really bitterly strong, I'll just take and rinse them with some cold water for a minute. Sometimes I'll use the insides, I'll use bell peppers, I'll use pimentos, depending on what I have. Uh, so, and sometimes I won't use all of them, I'll use some for the top for decorating. And there is our mixture. In Texas, it's a cheese ball, it's here, it's a cheesecake. All righty, so there's the mixture, put that on, and that's the savory one. Savory do not tend to crack like regular ones. There's not as much sugar or protein of the egg in there, so it doesn't have all the stuff to crack, so it kind of sits there a little bit more, and it works better. So there's those two. So you already ate, so you know if you liked it or not, you know. <laughs>